I think the fact we're sitting here talking about names, not numbers, is incredibly in tune with the mood of the times. The fact that actually social organizations, individuals, individual stories, personalities, and systems really matter. So a question I want to kind of really pose to all of us tonight is does individual expression need to resonate and cause a response to actually be expression? Uh, another example, I think we've all heard about this in the US. Um, there was a move earlier this year to get Betty White to be the host of Saturday Night Live. Um, it was started by one individual. He expressed his desire to have Betty White um, host Saturday Night Live. Lauren Michaels in his 30 plus years of um, producing the show has always relied on his own judgment. But this one individual started a move, a drive. And he had thousands of people liking Betty White to host Saturday Night Live. You know, one individual can start an expression, but he or she needs others to really finish it and to really make it come to life. Not to get commented upon, <laughs> not to have people um, join in what you're saying, uh, not to um, uh, provoke everyone else to respond is, um, actually that, that takes talent. And it finally comes down to how do we say something that's uh, meaningful? And I have no idea. <laughs> so what I want to speak about is, um, you know, cheese and individuality, if I might. <laughs> um, then one day, in 2004, the New Yorker magazine, I, I ran a profile about me. And, and, and so um, my, my dad retired then in Boca Raton. Um, did what you would expect and went around and showed it to all his neighbors. So that validated my, my, my career change. Um, so what's the point of all this? Um, friends were always telling me not to do the things that I really wanted to do. And, and so I, I guess I would say that, you know, it's just really nothing more than doing your own thing. Uh, and if they tell you that, they're, uh, that you're crazy, then, you know, don't listen. And, Get, get new friends. This is a paradox, this individuality question. On the one hand, you know, we're in an age where we're connected like never before. And you could make the case that talking about individuality now is absurd. It's not the story that matters. The story that matters is us as the connected whole, you know, the human family, the superorganism. I think Michael. Um, loves being the contrarian and, and made the case that it, it, it takes a special talent you know, not to be noticed now. That's actually not true because the median number of views of a typical blog post is zero. Um, more than half of what's written never gets seen by anyone. So one of the talents that's needed is not being an individual you know, sort of talent in front of the camera or the writer or whatever. It's, it's the trend spotter. It's, it's finding the, the talent that's out there and trying to bring it out to the bigger crowd. So it's, think of an ecosystem where all these different roles are possible. Yes, the innovator, the individualist, the artist, the star, um, but also the, the trend spotter, the cheerleader, um, the skeptic, the contrarian. These, these roles are all important because they keep the system clean. Mm -mm. I, I think Chris is profoundly confused um, between visibility and significance. There's nothing intrinsically, um, there should be nothing intrinsically uh, confirming significance about visibility. It's entirely whether what you make visible is true or important. And the other monster that's <coughs> from which <coughs> the cult of individuality has mutated is a kind of faux individuality, which is a sort of, it is a kind of democracy of drivel. It is the kind of right to bloviate. Everybody should indeed have the right to bloviate. The issue is, do we encourage our children to make distinctions and hierarchies between truth and falsehood, between the significant and the trivial, as these enormous kind of meteor showers of data come at them? And the danger now is actually that we have two kinds of monster fake individualities negotiating with each other. The brutality of neo-Hobbesian laissez-faire, me, me, mine. And on the other hand, a kind of rather mawkish, corrupt, mutated version of the sentimental right of self-expression. 
So what I would, would actually like is to, for someone in our own culture to be our Thoreau, but a Thoreau who doesn't have to retreat to Walden Pond, but speaks for the sovereignty of community instead. Can, can I, can I well, disagree with that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually agree with, 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 with Simon, but I think it's important to point out that what Simon said is completely irrelevant. Um, a, a, a technology is in place which is now changing everything. Um, so the world you describe, I, a, a fine world, is a lost world. Um, and we can mourn it, um, but I think we are, we are better served by describing and understanding the world that we are now um, necessarily in. <laughs> I'm not a Luddite, Michael. I'm not a Luddite. Luddite. I think it's important to plant the flag, actually, of <laughs> the significance of truth and a hierarchy of significance out there in the web. I'm You're sure. against people um, engaging in mutual obliviation, and, and, that, and that's, that's good. I agree with that. Um, but I think Michael's point is true that the world is as it is. So can we, can we say anything constructive here? You know, when, when print first came along, I mean, a huge percentage of books that are published were rubbish. But there were books in there that changed the world. The question is, are there people out there online doing, doing stuff that is remarkable? And if there is, shouldn't we be trying to find ways to celebrate them, to identify them, and to give them a wider audience? Well, someone wants to express their own individuality by asking a question back there. Uh, I'm writing a, a book on cooperation. And part of what we've been studying is how people cooperate online. People have very good uh, skills of display to other people and very poor interpretive skills. Uh, they have a hard time listening to other people. You have to develop skills to have an interaction, and they are not skills of display. That's the simple part. The, the real challenge is how people become more skillful in attending to others. I, I actually think what you're saying there is, is totally profound and on the money. Um, I think w the, the dynamics of the web are drive creating incentives and empowerment for people to build the skills of display. But if it stops at that and the other side is missing, then, then there's, no, there's no learning cycle. It's, it's, one, it's, it's everyone bloviating it at each, at each other, some of them more skillfully than others. Out there on the web, there are hidden away somewhere ideas that truly could make a more beautiful future for all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, on that rousing note, I will take control and say thank you very much to all of you for a very lively debate, and thanks to the audience for, for thank your you. participation. Oh, thank pleasure. you. I love it. Yeah, I love it. How do you preserve your individuality against the deluge of a mass age? Oh, right. Well, you know, it's terrifically fashionable, of course, to describe yourself as unfashionable, and I don't like balsamic vinegar, and I was country before it was cool, and all those sorts of things. Um, but there's no way around it. You just have to be yourself in the first place. And Stay true to yourself and not just get swayed by what everyone else is saying, and sort of retain that ability to have independent thought and action, which is not easy given the tides of sort of Twitter conversations and uh, your uh, various Facebook groups, but knowing who you are and what you stand for. Hey, speaking of individuality, one of the things we have in Brooklyn is we, one of the things we don't have in Brooklyn is we don't have box stores. In the neighborhood that I live in and all the little brownstone neighborhoods in Brooklyn, our, the equivalent of our high street, are individually owned stores, no chain stores at all. Short-term stratagems I adopt when the world's getting too much. Before I moved to New York, I would say drink. But now I've moved to New York, I actually do what everybody else does, which is I go to the park and run up and down. So that's not very individual, nor successful. So I think, absolutely, I think we, we have to, we will have to learn um, a whole new form of dieting, information dieting. Like we'll need to take time to cut ourselves off from the incoming torrent you know, take a deep breath, come back, and, and remember who we are so that we can then go out and contribute and play our part.